Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. If you haven't done so yet, please go ahead, rate and review the show. It's really easy to do on our new website. You just scroll down below there's always a video and then the audio of the show and right below it, all these buttons, one of which says leave a review. This week's review comes from Wild Berry Woman. And she says she's talking about Demini Celebrity, Your Soul's Journey. I appreciated Ali's casual and warm conversation with Damini. I found the podcast uplifting as I talked about Damini's book and practical applications to embody and be one's authentic self. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Wildberry woman. Today's guest, Jane Freund, tunes in to who she is frequently stepping in a new direction. Before jumping into a very fascinating talk, I have a question for you. Do you feel stuck in your life? Are you where you thought you'd be at this point in your world? Well, if you wished and hoped for something different and it didn't happen, do you wonder why not? Well, what I did was wrote a simple guide for you. Step in a new direction because the only way you're going to get someplace you've never been by thinking thoughts you've never thought so that you'll have feelings, so that you'll take actions you've never done in that way. You're going to get someplace you've never been. Jane Freund, we met years ago in an author group, and I felt very impressed with how she lives her life, how she overcomes challenges, and how she honors her nudges and follows her passions. A native lifelong Idahoan with a range of experiences. She taught communication at Boise State University, served as student body president at the University of Idaho, ran a career center, managed technical writing projects, was involved in politics, worked with homeless and domestic violence victims. She writes books, coaches, authors, and communicators, and tutor students of all ages. I'm talking from five to 85. Jane loves humor, particularly puns, and shares them far and wide. She's recognized as the pun lady. And in fact, she hosts my very favorite Facebook group, Punderful Wednesday, where I go to relax. I know I can always smile, sometimes groan, and sometimes laugh out loud, which for serious me, that's a big deal when I laugh out loud. A lifelong learner, Jane looks for lessons whenever, wherever, and from whomever they can be found. And notes some of the best jokes and puns she shares come from her students, the people she tutors. In 2006, a series of wake-up calls moved her to change careers, to write books, and pursue other passions. I had invited Jane to join me for many months, and she mulled over her decision with some coaxing from me. That's something I don't usually do, yet I felt deep inside that Jane's story, Jane's journey, would be of value to you, my epic adventure seeker. She finally agreed here in November, and I'm going to let her tell you why it's important and significant that she came to share with us in November. It's a great honor to welcome you, my friend Jane Freund, to our show. 
Well, thank you, Allie, and it's a great honor to be here. I am so excited to come have a conversation and, and talk more. Uh, it's, I always learn, and as you taught, you taught about, talked about five to 85 lessons all over life. But let me touch on why November is so significant for me. It's, it's really twofold. Um, the first one is November 30th of this year marks my 10 year, 10 year uh, survival journey, having survived thyroid cancer. I had no symptoms and uh, a really alert doctor picked up on it and I didn't need chemo or radiation. I had a thyroidectomy and um, have been doing well ever since. And then in 2017, on November 25th, I embraced a whole food plant-based cruelty-free eating lifestyle that has resulted in my losing 130 pounds, going from extremely obese to in the normal range of my weight, of wait for someone my height and the best health numbers of my life. Um, I now weigh what I did when I graduated high school almost 41 years ago. So, or excuse me, over 41, 42 years is coming up. So those are two reasons November is very significant to me. And now you have a third one. <laughs> yes, third one, absolutely. Now I have three. Yeah, I like that. Wow. I can't imagine there'd be a lot of people interested in how you managed to drop the weight because it takes more than just, well, exercise and eating the right foods and the mindset and the whole picture. I mean, we can discuss that at another time because I have so many questions I plan to discuss with you. Right. Love it. Yeah. So I was very intrigued when you said that your the best advice you ever had came from your mom. Mm -hmm. uh, could you share what that advice was? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mom taught me when I was in high school um, and I had to deal with someone and work with someone that I didn't particularly care, with, care to work with. And mom said, it, find something in every person you deal with that you like and emphasize that point. And her end to that was because you might end up in PTA with them someday. So um, in other words, you have, to, it, you have to learn how to work with people. And so find something you like about them and emphasize that. And that has helped me immensely in the 40 plus years since mom shared it with me. I think that's amazing advice. I came to that place on my own when I was in my 40s. And mm. your mom had some amazing wisdom. She did. She did indeed. Um, I, yeah, I, like I said, I quote her more than anyone else. And, and I was just sitting here thinking that I also got some of my sense of humor from her. Mom was raised with five brothers in, um, through the depression. And when they really irritated her and she wanted to get back at them, she'd go into their bedroom and hang up all their clothes. So then they couldn't find anything. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, That's original. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was mom. <laughs> you learned some incredible lessons. You didn't have run of the mill parents, as far as my awareness goes. Uh, your parents taught you the importance of making a difference and of giving back without expectations, without mm -hmm. the fanfare. Mm hmm. Where did that come from for your parents to share that way and be that way? Well, I, looking at both of them, you know, dad, dad um, came from, 
He was born in Austria by the time he was six and to a Jewish family. By the time dad was seven, both his parents were dead. And he lived with his great, his grandparents in Austria who had, who it turned out their landlord was a closet Nazi. So they escaped to the family farm in Czechoslovakia. Then in 38, they had the presence of mind, my great grandparents to get dad out of Austria uh, a week after Kristallnacht happened. And dad came to America and I'll talk more about his story in a, in a while, but he came to America and realized the sacrifice they had made and how it got him, it gave him opportunities. And mom, um, surviving the depression and um, seeing things as well and being raised with five brothers and, and in a family that gave back as well. Um, they demonstrated just quietly do things, just quietly do things. In fact, I'm thinking about the fact that mom and dad set up the Alois and Marie Goldman Memorial Scholarship in memory of dad's grandparents. And they were ultimately murdered at Auschwitz and the last group of people murdered. And they put this scholarship together through the Idaho Community Foundation and were really surprised at the like attention it got because they were used to just quietly doing things. It got media attention. It had been, it's been shared quite a bit. And that was just what they knew to do. You just go do something. And, and that's what they taught my um, brothers and sisters and me. And that's what we do. We do without fanfare. I think that's why I only knew a little bit about you before today's conversation. And yes. I, just, I just did a, an interview about being an introvert and it's, I, I do things quietly behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. nobody knows I did it because I'm not telling them. It's kind of the same kind of philosophy. Some people need to be out there. Some people maybe do this stuff for the fanfare. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how that was an interesting background speaking from a point of view of religion. What was the journey like for your faith when you were young? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's quite a little story itself. So dad as I said, was raised Jewish. And when he came to America in 1938, um, you know, we, we like to think that America was more welcoming of, of Jews. And unfortunately, we weren't at that, at that time. And so the family, the aunt, uncle, and cousin dad lived with had become Congregationalists. And so dad became a Congregationalist. Um, and in fact, didn't tell us um, until I think I was in junior high that he was raised Jewish. We had no idea. Wow. And mom was raised LDS or Mormon in Eastern Idaho. And uh, incidentally, because you know, I can't miss an opportunity to share a joke. One <laughs> of my, my good friends from college find, uh, finding out that dad was raised Jewish and mom was raised Mormon nicknamed me Jew Ron complete okay. with to the tune of do do, do ron ron she goes did you ron ron did you ron ron and, and and i can't hear that song without just bursting out laughing but I, so then i was raised congregationalist and and then when i was about 25 i became a, a christian and was um was rate like i said became a christian and about five years ago, I stopped attending church and in, in my view, expanded my faith journey because I was no longer keeping God in a box. And um, I am closer to, to God. I have a more of a, 
a personal deep faith than I've ever had in my life. And it's pretty incredible, pretty incredible. I want to ask you a little bit more about that. But first, okay. I want to take a quick sponsor break. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. I love books. I love to read them, hold them in my hand, and I love to listen to them. And often, I love to do both. And Audible is offering you a free trial, a 30-day trial. You get to choose the book of your choice, download it, listen to it. And after the 30 days, if for any reason you haven't discovered all the incredible offerings in Audible and you cancel, you still have to keep the book. Now, the book that I'm listening to right now is by Heather Monahan, and it's called Overcome Your Villains, Mastering Your Beliefs, Actions, and Knowledge to Conquer Any Adversity. Now, the reason I'm recommending this book is because I've never been so impacted as I was by this book. Just from the first chapter, I made three very instant, very dramatic life changes that I wasn't even aware were holding me back in really key areas of my life. So I can't recommend it highly enough. Plus, that's another thing I love about Audible. This is one of many Audible books that I have. It comes with a PDF download with all the steps and everything that Heather's discussing. The link to get your free trial is in the show notes. And now getting back, you mentioned that you took God out of the box. So could you explain? Explain that for people who might not be grasping what you mean. Um, so I, I think that I, okay, two thoughts collided there. Boom. Let me, let me kind of talk through it. Sometimes what I had found was church would have set rules. We have to do things certain ways. You know, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. And as I stepped back and looked at my faith, you know, we, this is how I see it, is it, the Old Testament has the Ten Commandments, okay? And, you know, we're, those were laid out what, you know, we were supposed to do. Then we get the New Testament, and it's broken down to two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. I focus on those two commandments because I think in some ways the 10 commandments, you know, they, they can trip you up. Well, what about this and not that? What about this? Not that. Hey, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your, your God. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. That was taking God out of the box. It's for me, it's much easier to go with those two as opposed to what I, I saw with the 10, saw felt with the 10. Yeah, I just jump in there. I grew yeah. up Jewish and I never knew what you just said. And I thank you, thank you for sharing that because it makes a really big difference for me in my understanding of the difference Old Testament, New Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm glad to do that. Glad to do that. Yeah. And you said it was twofold, or was that the twofold? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think if there's, um, you know, it's, I, I just, I simply feel like I have a stronger faith and a closer relationship and am able I, it, it's serenity it's serenity i have serenity and that just makes all the difference it's i i totally get that and i know that one thing you had mentioned was 
living life in an ideal way involves the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual component. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what you just said. Did she feel like elaborating on the other elements? Sure, sure. Um, so that for me, I, I think about, I, I look at my life, okay? And I go, that's the spiritual part I just talked about. The mental part has been the learning and the growing and the, the brain and such. Um, I, I have a, a high IQ and that doesn't necessarily, that means I have a high IQ. That doesn't <laughs> necessarily mean that I'm smart or wise. Okay. And I laugh because usually when I tell people that, then the next words out of my mouth are really stupid. Um, <laughs> but, but my, so, but it's mental, it's the learning, it's the growing, um, the physical, what has been doing things like embracing the whole food, plant-based cruelty-free lifestyle and, and feeling so, so much better. Now the emotional piece, I, I have had to work to develop emotional intelligence and learn feelings. In fact, I have an old friend who's a life coach who years ago helped me learn about emotions and, and such. And, you know, I was like, wow, what? And then I literally said, okay, so now you've taught me about emotions. I want to make a plan about how to deal with emotions because it had to be structured. And I can still hear her laugh in my ear. Um, but where, where I've come from emotionally is to realize, start with one of the three basics, sad, mad, glad. And, and then I can go from there. But yeah, that was, that was classic Jane. Let's do a plan. So yeah, so there, that's what I see as the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. That's so interesting. In case you haven't figured it out, I come from my emotions. Do you know there's actually a term for very intelligent people? I'm pretty intelligent. I'm not like I've been, uh, I'm a, a low level genius. So I love intelligent people. That's part of what attracts me to you, I'm sure. And I'm going to have to find that term because I search for it very often. I could just sit and listen to people who know. In fact, my coach mentor is he's up in Mensa and he can just look at something and see it so clearly like you were just describing. And he can give me a whole plan that I couldn't begin to imagine. And uh -huh. that's a real talent. So I'm glad that people come to you for tutoring no. and coaching. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and if I can throw one more thought in there too, and that Please. is I learn so much from kids. From children. I mean, I, you know, I think one of the things society teaches us or has taught us is children are to be seen and not heard. And I, I have found um, that children do know, do know, and all you have to do is ask. And, and I will tell you part of that was being brought up in a, a family of politicians and being exposed to the political life from a real early age. My, one of my uncles was a congressman from Eastern Idaho. In 1968, I campaigned for the first time. I was five. I tell people I knew where Preston was before Napoleon Dynamite. And, and part, but part of that was we were then thrust into an adult world very early. And I have very distinct memories of those adults adults who treated us with respect and wanted to know what we thought and those who were nice when the adults were in the room and then treated us you know like go away beyond that and I always strive to be the kind of person that treats kids with respect that's just that that's so extraordinary it's 
knowing that we're connected this morning when I was meditating, I was thinking about <laughs> that the prefrontal lobe where you develop reasoning doesn't happen until adolescence, which happens at somewhere between the ages 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. And the reason I was thinking about that is sometimes I'll, okay, I have grandchildren and sometimes their parents say things, oh no, I didn't raise them to raise their kids that way. But I'll see other parents acting the exact same way, speaking the exact same words, like, you know, think about what you just did. And they're talking to a three-year-old or maybe a two-year-old and they'll send them to the room, you know, go up and think about the behavior that you just did. It's like, they have no idea what you're talking about. Right, right. They, they do share wisdom though. I remember my son was probably three or four and we were in the grocery store one day and he's looking up at the ceiling. And so I looked up, there was stuff up there. So I never looked up at the ceiling before. Kids are so much more aware oh, yeah. than we as adults who tend to have more of a tunnel vision. So to be able to listen, I have a three-year-old grandson who I gave him a pamphlet that was made for adults on dinosaurs because he's such a dinosaur. And he opens, he unfolds it, and he knows all of them. And he knows all the names. So, uh -huh. yes, exactly what you just said. Kids share that we never know what's going to come out of I only have three grandchildren, but I never know what's going to come out of their mouths. And it's always something profound because it's honest. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not filtering. Is it OK to say this? They'll just speak honestly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and OK, you this listening piece, I want to throw something else out because I think it's important. Of four formats of communication, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Listening is what we do first in life. It's what we do most in life. And it's what we are taught the least. And I think we need more good listeners in the world. I oh, think yes. we'd be so much better off. Totally, totally. That's, uh, I'm a really, really good listener. And in my relationship book, I have a whole chapter. One is how to talk so others will listen to you. And then there's a chapter, how to listen so people will talk to you. And it's a skill that I, I think I've figured it out from experience. And of course, coming from psychotherapy and coaching, and I imagine that you're an amazing coach and you have extraordinary listening skills. Because otherwise, people wouldn't recommend you. They wouldn't be keeping coming. You wouldn't be working with people from five to eighty-five. Right, right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't at all. Mm -hmm. So, you said each morning you ask yourself, "What can I do? What one thing can I do today that I didn't do yesterday to take better care of me?" Right, right. And, and let me share where that originated from, that comment or that idea was. Um, so my, my dad struggled with depression and only later in his life did um, we realize that he had undiagnosed thyroid cancer that had spread quite far. And because your, your thyroid's like your thermostat. And, and so dad, dad, they found it in like 1998 and got it out and he had radiation and had eight more good years. But I, I would spend a lot of time talking with dad. And I had gone over to visit my parents in Eastern Idaho. And I was sitting in the off, dad's office one day with him. And we were talking about how he was doing. This was before his cancer was found. And I just looked at him and these words weren't mine. And I said, dad, what's one thing you can do today that you didn't do yesterday to deal with your depression? And he, he looked at me and we put it as that old, you know, back in the day with the, the computer monitors where something would just scroll across the computer. 
we put it there so we saw it every morning. And some days it was dad, dad's one thing would be go meet with a group of retired chemical engineers. And some days it would be get out of bed. And that stuck with me. And so that's exactly what I do now is ask myself, what is one thing I can do to take care of me? Because I got to take care of me. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is important. And I'm not available for my, if I'm not available for myself and taking care for myself, I can't be available for anybody else. Absolutely. I, I believe our job is to be the best me possible. Which is, is uh, so I've been living and teaching that same. I have a routine I do that involves gratitude and blessings and meditation and happy and grateful list and doing Qigong every day and every other day. I do a workout and I do rebounding. And if I get in bed and I forgot to do something, I don't go to sleep until I've done this something because I feel incomplete. That's my self-care. And it makes a difference because I'm not going to do well if I haven't done all of that stuff. What I need to do is move myself ahead in the day instead of taking care of everybody else's everything before I get to me. But then mm -hmm. I've done my whole morning meditations and blessings before I'll go near anybody else. <laughs> oh, get it. I get it. Beautiful. What is, or, or is there, I imagine there are many, a message that you want to be sure to leave with our listeners today. So listeners, perk up your ears. Oh, oh wow. No pressure there. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've shared, I, I've shared some, and, you know, I was sitting here thinking about this. And something came to mind and it involved a little kid I tutored and he, he had taken a, something like a car or someone, something from another student at school and his mother had figured it out and, you know, he admitted it and um, he was upset and, and we were, we were at a pizza place and I just reached over and I hugged him and I said, nothing you do can ever make me stop loving you. And he looked at me and said three words that have stuck with me ever since. And he was all of about eight. Love never breaks. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, right. Yeah, oh, that, that's a beautiful message to close. Wow, thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. How or what is the best way for people to reach you? Okay, I would say probably email would be the best. And I can give that email address. You want me to spell it out? Um, how well, about if I, 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 yeah, why don't you do that? Okay. It's Jane, J-A-N-E, at Freundship, which is a play on my last name, F-R-E-U-N-D-S-H-I-P dot com. Okay. And, you know, you can always find me on, as I describe it. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, those, I'm, I'm on those as well. And Goodreads. And what kind of stuff, for lack of a better word, stuff, you wouldn't know I'm a writer, uh, would people find on your website? Well, you know, it's, I, my website's under reconstruction. Okay. It's more... It's more like what you find on Facebook, like the Ponderful Wednesday group. Okay. And, and I, I have a presence there on Facebook, Instagram, 
I also have an Instagram account for my whole food plant-based cruelty-free. Um, I tend to be more about sharing puns and um, inspiration. I do talk about things that um, I believe need to be talked about. Um, for example, one of the things in the infrastructure bill is it looks like um, some Native Americans are finally going to have uh, access to clean drinking water. And oh, wow. that's, that's something that needs to be talked about. So yeah, I, I've been known to have an opinion or two or a hundred. Well, that, that's powerful. And I thank you for speaking up and not hiding because you're afraid to step forward and be different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for finally coming on and sharing. I, I knew it would be a lot of fun. And I trust that many tidbits are, I call it, um, planting seeds and all the appropriate seeds for each person listening now will sprout at the moment. It's right for you. Not a moment too soon, not a moment too late, but exactly the right time. Thank you. I want to remind you to download your copy of the quick guide, Step in a New Direction. Join our Facebook group and take advantage of that audible trial. All of these links are in the show notes. And I look forward to being here with another fun episode with you next week.